This is the Oklahoma Sports Podcast presented by OklahomaSports.net. Stay tuned for interviews and information about high school, college, and professional sports around the state of Oklahoma. Now here's your host, Joey McWilliams. Hi there, this is John Little. Welcome into a special OklahomaSports.net podcast. I appreciate Joey McWilliams allowing me to bring this to you and talk about a topic that is so close to my heart, which is Southwestern Oklahoma State women's basketball. I got not my start in radio, but one of my earliest jobs in radio was at Southwestern Oklahoma State University in Weatherford, Oklahoma, following the Bulldogs and following this women's basketball team. Kelsey Music came in as the head coach of the team in my second year as the broadcaster. And then in my last year as the broadcaster, these two bright young freshmen came in and you could tell that along the line they were going to be something very, very special. And now here in their senior years, they have blossomed into something amazing. Talking about Hayden Pretty along with Haley Tucker. And I got to talk to them and Coach Music this week. I think you're really going to enjoy these conversations as we come to the end of the regular season. And they're at 25-1 and one now on the year, heading into this weekend and the last in conference play, then into the conference tournament, and certainly the NCAA tournament's coming up after that as well. And I got to talk to Hayden Pretty, first of all, about how the team has reacted this year to the target being on their back each and every game. Now, 25 straight wins uh, when they've been uh, a team that people have wanted to knock off this year. Um, I just think, you know, every game is just a game. Like, yes, we have the 25 win streak, but we're not really so much worried about that as much as just the next game coming out with a win and then the game after that coming out with a win. And it's one of those things where, yes, we know the streak is there, but we don't really talk about it because we're just focused on just winning the next one. And you're focused on improving. And you guys yes. have improved as a scoring team this year and, and probably overall. But what's your reaction to 87 points a game? You guys have always been a great scoring team. But those are some new heights for Swasu basketball. Um, I think our defense definitely has helped with our offense. I mean, offense always comes. You play good defense, it transfers to good offense. But I think getting those turnovers that we get a game, it leads to more points because we have more possessions with the ball in our hand. What was your reaction when Coach came up with that idea to try to tip the scales in your favor, the uh, the defense that you guys do play this year? I was like, what the heck? You are going to have us press my senior year when I'm getting old – <laughs> can't really, don't really feel like I can move as good as I did my freshman year, and then you're going to have us press the whole game, full court. I was a little shocked, but it's actually worked out in our favor, and it's, I really enjoy it now. Like, I really love it. Well, you say that uh, the knees are getting a little old there and the joints are starting to ache a little bit, but, uh, but the mind is sharp as ever. How do you see yourself as a smarter basketball player or a just more cerebral basketball player than you were when you came in? Yes, I mean, I don't have the speed that Tyra has. I don't have the strength that Tyra has. I don't have the height that Haley has. And so when I'm on defense, I just try to think, okay, if I was on offense, what would I be doing if I had the ball? And so I try to just, like, outthink. It doesn't always go in my favor, but that's just I have to use my mind more than my body sometimes because I wasn't necessarily blessed with the best physical ability. (laughs) How has this team developed as a road team and I don't mean to compare you to your freshman season but you guys just weren't very good on the road your freshman year it was like a stark contrast really good at home uh, not very good on the road how have you become a better road team over the years you know I just think it comes from playing together I mean me and Haley and KP have been here for four years and Savannah's been here for most of that and then Tyra and Taylor they've been here for three years and B it's just knowing each other and having the confidence to step out on the court and just like there will be times when I don't even know if like like where I'm passing the ball but like Tyra and Haley will know where it's going to go and they just get there and I just think that comes from experience and playing together and just having confidence in yourself and in your teammates. You guys have everything cinched up going into this week but you know you've got this big road trip coming up this week it's always fun to go to Harding and Arkansas Tech what would it mean to just go ahead and run through the rest of the league um 
Um, you know, I at the beginning of the season when I found out that we were playing Hardy and Tech the week before Bottlesville, I really didn't want that because, you know, Hardy and Tech are typically the top teams in the conference. But now that it's here, it it kind of helps because you get up to play Hardy and Tech and so now we're up to play Hardy and Tech, we're gonna be up to going to Bottlesville and at first I was just a little skeptical, but it is what it is and we just gotta go out and play. Well, speaking of Bartlesville, last year uh, you guys came in as the regular season winners. You had to make that big comeback in the opening game. How did that affect your semifinal performance, you think? Um, I think, you know, we ha- we did have to play a tough game on, I think it was Thursday we had to play a tough game. And so we weren't as rested as we should have been, and that was our own fault. You know, Coach had a great game plan, and we just didn't execute it properly. And, yes, we got the win, but I think you're right. I think it probably did affect us a little bit going into the next game because we weren't as rested as we probably should have been. Well, I have to, you know, sprint for, you know, every yeah. moment of, of that fourth quarter to be able to, to make that comeback. Yeah, along yeah. those lines, what have you learned uh, about playing in Bartlesville over the years? Well, I haven't exactly always played my best at Bartlesville, and so I'm hoping to go into this year just – playing good and having good games and really not worrying about the past but it's my last year and so I'd just like to come out with a win at Bartlesville. Senior point guard Hayden Pretty, the all-time leader in assists in Southwestern history, fourth in scoring, second when you look at the Division II history and also second in most three-pointers made. Now the only player she trails in three-pointers made and points is her teammate, one of her best friends as well, Haley Tucker. Tucker came in from Bartlesville her freshman season and immediately started to light things on fire in the Great American Conference. She was the freshman of the year that year. She was the player of the year, and then she was the player of the year. And she's got a great chance to make it a three-peat, although Hayden might have something to say about that. Maybe we'll split it this year. Who knows? But uh, Haley Tucker will be known as one of the best players to ever come through Southwestern Oklahoma State. And I got to chat with her as well. I guessed it was you. You guessed? I guessed. You're a good guesser. (laughs) Hey, Haley, how's it been going? Good, how have you been? I'm really well. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You guys have been uh, running the gauntlet as far as the the media attention goes. And that's not necessarily uh, normal for a Division II basketball team from an hour west of a major town. I, I know you're not a player that's going to let it go to your head or anything like that, but how do, you, how do you deal with that while at the same time relishing it? Because it is special when you guys start to get attention like this. Yeah, you know, um, it, it, it's nice to uh, get the attention that we've been getting in you know, the past couple of months, but it's also all because, you know, we have a 25-game winning streak and because we've been so successful this year. So, um, you know, we we don't really talk about, like, you know, individual superlatives or, you know, anything like that. But we, like you said, we do relish in the fact that, you know, people are starting to pay attention to our program and what Coach Music and Coach Anderson have built here. And uh, it's just it's just a really cool thing that, you know, uh, like you said, Southwestern, a small little college, is getting you know all this media attention, and it's re- just a really cool thing. It certainly is, and uh, you guys have improved as the season's gone on. Uh, I've heard you talk about how uh, you know, how much the the change on the defensive end has kind of tipped the game in your favor. Can you talk about your assignment on a defensive by defensive possession? Uh, because you're the longest player on the floor. You've got that long wingspan. You've got the, the best chance to make defensive plays uh, a lot of times. So what's your particular focus on, on a defensive possession? Whenever I always say this, whenever Coach Music first started it, I was like, you're crazy. Because, you know, I'm tall, I'm lanky, and I'm very slow. So I just... You know, I had to, you know, come into my own with it and outsmart people, like Hayden said. And, uh, you know, it, it, with my defensive assignment on the press, it's it's a trap, you know, because, I mean, like you said, I am the longest person on the floor. So I have to get up there and, you know, with Tyra or with a smaller guard who's quicker than me, I have to come from behind and, you know, sneak up on the ball handler, per se, and, uh, you know, just trap her and hopefully I could get a tip or a steal from it and, you know, it's just a really cool thing to see it, you know, get better throughout the months, throughout the past months. And uh, it's just a really cool thing that we've 
you know, instituted and that Coach Music has instituted and Coach Anderson, and it, it's just it's helped us so much to, you know, I mean, we weren't beating people last year by, you know, 30, 40 points, and this year we are, and it's all thanks to the press. When did you guys know, was there a tipping point in which you knew that, oh, yeah, this is, this is actually working? Was there, was there a particular game? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, it was working in the beginning, you know, and we were getting better at it. But then I, it was the uh, Lubbock Christian game. Um, they're a very good team. They're a very well-coached team. And I believe that they had, like, 25 turnovers, 25-plus turnovers. And I was like, okay, this, this is really working because if we can get a team like Lubbock Christian who doesn't turn the ball over to turn it over that many times, you know, I mean, it, it's obviously working. Absolutely it is, and it's uh, pretty incredible. It has the effort you've had to put out on the defensive side, has that taken away a little bit from your legs on the offensive side? People might think that since, like, you know, my numbers are down this year a little bit, uh, but I mean, we're just more, you know, balanced this year. We have a, a really good balance of scoring and stuff. And uh, people might say, you know, are you tired on the offensive end? But no, I mean, we we have a really great preseason. I mean, I say it's really great, but during it, I'm hating my life, you know. Uh, but it, it's a really tough preseason. And Coach Music and Coach Anderson, they get us prepared for like what we're having to go through right now and play 40 minutes of a press and. Uh, you know, sometimes I, I don't want to come out the game and Coach Music knows that. And so sometimes I do get tired because it is, you know, like I said, 40 minutes of press. But um, it, I, don't, I don't think it really messes with my offense too, too much unless I'm just needing, you know, a second of break. I understand. And like you said, I mean, offensively, team-wise, you're probably better than you guys have ever been just as a team. And one of the ways we're seeing that is through the assist numbers where five different players have 47 assists or more this year. That's a really big number. Is is this team moving the ball as well as uh, you guys have since you've been there? Oh, for sure. And, you know, and we're knocking down shots. We just have, like I said, just a more balanced attack. And uh, we have, you know, at least three shooters on the court at all times, or at all times, and you know, even our post girls can shoot it, even though they really don't, but they they can and they have the ability to. So, um, we just we've been doing a lot better job of you know catching and finishing, and so that that I think that's just where our assists are coming from, and you know from steals too. We we steal it and we throw it ahead, and they get a wide open layup, you know. So uh, ultimately, I think it almost goes back to the press as well because we a lot of those assists do come from the steals. What have you learned about playing? in tournament basketball over the course of your career because obviously the last two years you guys have been the best team in the league over the course of the season and your regular season champs and you deserve all those accolades Uh, but uh, during tournament play it it just gets a little bit tougher why is that and what can you guys do better yeah you know everyone going into the tournament is zero zero I mean the tournament's going to be set but it's it's your third time playing them and no one, I mean, everyone has nothing to lose, you know, except for our season. Like they just want to go in there and just start fighting for their life, you know, and uh, it just gets tougher because there's no pressure on them, you know, except to make the tournament. And uh, once they make it, then they're like, okay, well, let's just go out swinging, you know, and uh, it's just a tough atmosphere because it's just tough. And then playing, three days back to back to back that is also tough so I mean getting to the championship is almost a feat in and of itself but uh winning the championship would be super nice for us because you know we have never you know won it but so that's a very personal goal for especially us seniors this year to to win that championship and I know it would be special for you as well do you feel any extra pressure when you step on that floor because that's where you played You know, uh, people say that, like, ask me that all the time, but I'm comfortable there, um, especially since we played there for four years now. But people are always asking me if I shoot better in there or anything like that. But if you go back and look at my numbers, I definitely do not shoot good there um, because I'm a deep three-point shooter, you know, and that's a high school gym, so it does mess with me a little bit. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's comfortable because I know I'm surrounded by family and friends that I've known for a long time, so... I just really like going back there and playing. At Southwestern Oklahoma State, senior guard slash forward Haley Tucker, and not only is she the second all-time leading scorer in Swasu history, she's the all-time leading scorer now in Great American Conference history. Uh, She's also third in blocks. Uh, She's third in three-pointers made as well, third in rebounds, an all-around great 
in the history of Great American Conference basketball. And I got to talk to their head coach as well, Kelsey Music, who is leading her team through this 25-game winning streak, and she's doing it uh, with these four great senior players, including the two we just talked to. And I, I got to talk to her about Haley and Hayden. It's, it's like they're really mature seniors, and they, they know what to say. I know. Look at them. They used to be babies. <laughs> I know. They, they did used to be babies. Let's, let's talk about that for a second because it, you put together and you had the idea to put together this incredible Senior Day video. What gave you that idea, a letter to my freshman self? You know, initially I'd seen Oh You Do It a few years ago and I thought, man, that's really cool. And I just kind of filed it away and I was just like waiting for the right moment. And I was like, I obviously senior day kind of snuck up on me and I was like, man, this is the group. They've, they've left a legacy. They've, they're four year kids. Um, and I just thought what better way to honor them. And I was like, and not just to honor them, but to help my younger players realize like all these things that I'm telling you, it, it's going to happen and it's going to happen fast. And, you know, don't wish your days away and things like that. So I thought, okay, I didn't even tell him. I just told him, hey, write a letter to your freshman self from your senior self. And those were their words from the heart. And, you know, Jacob th- finished, put, compiled the video and put it together. I, I told him and Doug my vision. And they, man, they did an amazing job to bring it to fruition. It was really, really awesome. And if people haven't seen it, you need to seek it out. And uh, it's all over Swasu's social media. It's just it's just wonderful. Um. You having been a collegiate athlete and one of the best players in Cameron's history, is there anything you can impart to these girls as they go through these final uh, games of their career, however many uh, there might be, about how to get the most out of that and how to eliminate the distractions or uh, emotions that might get in the way of their ultimate goals? You know, I think the first thing is we learned a lot from last year. Um, you know, we I felt like we got maybe maybe pretty pretty good a little little quicker than we thought and and last year I felt like they they allowed the pressure to get to them and I really feel like I always tell them to learn from your mistakes don't make the same mistake twice and I feel like that's kind of where we're at right now as far as embracing the moment and just realizing that we do have big goals but instead of being scared of those realizing that we're good enough to reach them and, you know, and I always tell them, like, to enjoy the ride because one day I always told them the story when I played my last college basketball game. I didn't want to take off my jersey. My mom had to come in the locker room and, and force me to take it off. And, you know, like, for instance, on that video, KP made the, the comment, like, one day I'm going to take this jersey off and not be able to put it back on. And so I really just want him to seize the moment. You know, we focus on the next game. You're guaranteed 40 minutes on this night and we have to embrace it and our our goal is to elevate our game each and every time we take the floor and your goal is to coach up these kids every time but what have you learned about yourself as a coach through this national recognition through your team becoming more recognized you know and 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 taking this program from three wins to already 25 at this point in the season what have you learned about yourself I'm extremely competitive, um, <laughs> you know, and like, you know, I say, I take some of the things that I tell my players to myself, for instance, you know, don't make the same mistake twice, learn from your mistakes, you know, um, for instance, if we, if, you know, for instance, when we lost that Emporia game, I blame myself more than I blame anyone in any time. I, I, I feel like I don't perform up to my very best and, you know, we didn't press for 40 whole minutes that game. I, I switched it up, and I felt like that was one of my, my mistakes that I personally made, and so that was something I was able to, to change and fix. But I always just, you know, I take it as a, as a challenge as I'm doing game, game prep and I'm watching all this film, and I just try to make sure I put my players in the best situation possible and that I try to exploit any weakness that I can find in the other team and just to give them all of the information that I can in order for them to use their skills to the best of their ability. At the end of this thing, we'll be able to look back at this team most likely. These are going to be the three leading scorers in the Division II history of the Swasu program, all playing together on the same team. How fortunate do you count yourself to be able to coach? I know, I know you're proud of everybody, uh, this trio together. I just think it's impressive because they all bring something totally different, but together... 
I just think that they're just so dominant. Um, you know, they each have their own style. They each have their own confidence. But it's so neat to see Tyra's a little bit more quiet, but to see how they look to her for, you know, that sense of security or how, you know, if they need a big three, they might, you know, they might look to, to Haley or, you know, Haley's not scared to take the big shot. And, you know, when the game's on the line, Hayden doesn't mind taking that shot or getting fouled. And just to see see how they're all so different, but yet how they can perform so wonderfully together. It's like the the perfect orchestra, you know? And so I, I just, I felt honored to be able to, to coach them. And I'm just so blessed that, that they chose Swasu and to just be able to leave a legacy and to be part of our Bulldog family. It just makes my heart swell with pride. Well, it's the last ride for these Swasu greats. It's the last GAC tournament in Bartlesville. Haley's from Bartlesville. What are you thinking about the the GAC tournament this year? I know you've got to perform, but it seems like there are some stars aligning here for you guys to have a pretty good performance. I think the biggest thing is that me and Coach Anderson, we've won, we've been there and been a part of winning the tournament. And these three, you know, these seniors haven't, and those that trio hasn't. They haven't won the conference tournament, and that is something that has bothered them and got in their guts a little bit. And I feel like. You know, there's always been something that, that has kept them, whether, you know, they had a bad performance or a bad shooting night or, you know, we got upset last year. So all those things, I think, are fueling us to do something different and to be able to finish. We want to win the tournament, and that is a huge goal of ours because that's something these guys have never done. That is Southwestern Oklahoma State head coach Kelsey Music in her 10th year. Can't believe that. 10 years as the head coach of Southwestern Oklahoma State, and what a job she and the Bulldogs have done. And we'll see where it all ends up this year, but 25 straight wins heading into this weekend. It's been a special season for Southwestern Oklahoma State, and it's not done as of yet. Thanks so much for listening. This has been John Little for OklahomaSports.net.